Last week's video is a great example why I love YouTube so much. Many of you have listened to the three basic orchestral mock-ups. Voted on the one that you thought that sounded the best to your ears. And even some of you gave their insights, their thoughts, their arguments why they picked that particular one. And those comments underneath that video are treasures, tiny treasures for any starting aspiring film composer. So if this video is your entry level, my advice is go back to last week's video, listen carefully to the three basic orchestral mock-ups from the Polar Express suit. Pick the one that you think sounds best to your ears. Then read the comments underneath that video in search of those tiny treasures. And then return to this video where I will take you more in depth in the settings of the orchestral mock-up that got the most votes. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. Before I start to talk about votes and which MIDI mock-up got the most votes, I really want to address that if you have picked the orchestral mock-up with the least amount of votes, you did not do anything wrong. This is just the sound that you preferred. And this is about personal taste, this is about preferences, and about nuances, little details that you like or you don't like. So all three mock-ups are great mock-ups, but the one maybe sounds a little bit more realistic or a little bit more professional than the other one, but that is just in the tiny details of the settings. All right, the mock-up with the least amount of votes is orchestral mock-up number one. That is the one that I have used my preferred microphone settings in combination with a little bit of extra panning done in contact, just like I showed you in the masterclass video. The orchestral mock-up that ended up on number two, runner-up, and that was a really close call with the one that ended up as number one, only a couple of votes difference. Number two was orchestral mock-up number two. And that is the one with only three mics and no extra panning. So the one that is favored the most by the people who listened to all three versions and gave me their vote is orchestral mock-up number three. My preferred microphone settings in combination with a little bit of panning done in Presidents, a spatial plugin of which I have talked a couple of times here on my channel. All right, so let's continue to that specific orchestral mock-up number three, the one with my preferred microphone settings in combination with a little bit of panning done in presidents and let's have a closer look what i have done and what i would change now based on the comments on last week's video trying to get an even better and maybe a more realistic orchestral mock-up sound so we are in the orchestral MIDI mock-up of the Polar Express suit with the presidents and my preferred microphone settings, the mock-up that got the most votes. Woodwinds on top, then the brass, then the perk, a piano, strings, choir, and two individual libraries. One from Sono Kinetic model runs, which I have used for a woodwind run. I was quite lazy. And the Cinesign light, which is a sub bass supporting the double basses and the tuba in the low end. All right, what I will do is I will go through this MIDI mock-up section by section. So starting with the woodwinds, showing you the microphone settings that I have used for the instruments and showing you the settings from precedence. Then we're gonna have a listen to this section, to each section isolated. So you get a good understanding how it sounds isolated. Woodwinds. All the woodwinds use the same library. In this case, the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds Library. This is my go-to library when doing orchestral mock-ups. I love it. I like it. This It sounds amazing straight out of the box. I know this is my personal opinion. You can disagree with me, but this is my go-to library when doing orchestral mock-ups. 
Now, all the woodwinds used the same microphone settings as we can see here on the screen for the flutes. So a dominant close mic and a tree and an ambient mic added to it to get that feeling of the space, the room in which this instrument is recorded in. Why a dominant close mic? Because I love that extra bite, that extra detail to cut through all the instruments in this entire mock-up. Now, when we have a look at presidents, you will notice that all the woodwinds are mostly centered. So only an angle of minus 10 or plus 10 on the bassoons with a distance of 55 or the closest 50. The flutes and the clarinets on the left side of the stage and the bassoon and the oboe on the right side of the stage and the model runs in the center. So how does this sound when we isolate this orchestral section? pretty nice. Let's continue with the brass. I've used two different libraries. One, Native Instrument Symphony Series, the Horns Legato Patch, in combination with the Spitfire Symphonic Brass Library. And when we have a closer look at that one, I have used for all the instruments out of the Spitfire Symphonic Brass Library the same microphone settings. Meaning, for brass, my dominant mic is the ambient mic, the microphone that has the most spacious, widest feeling of all. Because in my opinion, and that it's personal, personal taste, I think that brass needs to breathe. It needs room. So my ambient mic is the dominant mic with a little bit added by the close mic and the tree mics. For the Native Instrument Symphony Series, I just used the default stereo mic. So nothing done with the close, the mids and the fars. When we have a closer look at presidents, and this is something I guess that I would do different now, mostly based on the arguments Paul gave me. But I just wanted to show you what the settings were of the mock-up that you have listened to last week. And in this case, the horns are on the left side with an angle of minus 30. The horns, native instruments, a distance of 60 and the ones from native instruments with a distance of 80. The tuba and the trombones are on the right side of the stage, trombones with an angle of 15 a distance of 60 and a tuba, an angle of 10 and a distance of 70. And what I would do different now and what I will change in the upcoming week is I will push the horns more to the center and more to the background. Based on the arguments Paul gave and Paul is one of the guys on YouTube who makes really outstanding, amazing orchestral mock-up. So he knows what he's talking about. So thanks for that advice, Paul, I will apply it to this orchestral mock-up of the Polar Express suit. All right, let's have a listen to the brass section isolated. How does it sound? Beautiful. Percussion. 
three different libraries most of them spitfire percussion spitfire audio percussion one native instruments the symbol in this case and i have used one patch from hand simmer percussion the low booms i've used different microphone settings oh my this was quite an experiment the celeste tree mic dominant added a little bit of the closed and the ambient mics to get that spacious feeling desk bells this was a really hard one the desk bells i struggled with it a lot eventually i ended up with this crazy microphone settings a tree mic a full close mic and an ambient mic halfway don't ask me why it just sounded good the tubular bells in this case i ended up with the tree mic as the dominant mic and i added the ambient mic to get a little bit more roomy sound the symbol from the native instrument symphony series just the stereo mic the default stereo mic nothing else done it sounded great the piadi from spitfire audio tree mic dominant close mic ambient mic same setting as the celeste then the timpani the timpani i've used only the tree mic but when we have a closer look at the timpani rolls i ended up again with a quite bizarre microphone setting perhaps full closed full tree the bass drum from spitfire audio tree mic dominant mic and halfway close mic and last but not least hand simmer low boom default close mic let's have a closer look at the settings in precedence of the percussion all right the celeste the piadi the cymbals and the tubular bells are all located around this area an angle of 20 and a distance of 60. the timpani rolls the timpani hits and the hand simmer low boom is located in the center timpani hits and the low boom on a distance of 60. the timpani rolls really close to the stage on a distance of 20. And that's because I wanted to get as close as possible to the original soundtrack and the timpani rolls are quite dominant. The desk bells, I struggled a lot with the desk bells, so I pushed them far, far away. On a distance of 90 with an angle of 5. Now how does this orchestral section, the perk, sound isolated? I love percussion. Let's go to the strings. I've used three different libraries. Two I'm pretty familiar with and I know pretty well, and one I'm not familiar with and still discovering. First of all, the two that I know pretty well. The Spitfire Symphonic Strings and the Spitfire Chamber Strings. Two beautiful libraries and until now my Go to libraries when doing orchestral mock ups and using strings. When I use the Symf Spitfire Symphonic strings, I use this microphone settings for mainly all the instruments dominant tree, added ambient, and added a little bit of the close mic. This is a setting that was available on the Spitfire Audio website. Recently they removed it, I guess. I couldn't find it anymore. But they shared a couple of settings, microphone settings, with a brief description 
of the sound of it. And this one was one of those settings and I fell in love with it instantly. So I kept using this. Tree mic as dominant mic, ambient and close added. I ended up with a little bit of a crazy microphone setting for the Spitfire Chamber strings, but hey, this is just personal taste. Close mic, dominant. Added a tree mic, the ambient and the outrigger. I used that on the violins too, and I also used that on the violas. The library that I don't know pretty good at this moment because I'm still discovering it. I bought this library because I want to do more hybrid orchestral tracks and this is a library that is associated with that genre. But I also discovered that it has a pretty good legato patch which I love to use in this Polar Express suit MIDI mockup. So I ended up with this one from Jaeger Audio Imperia, the legato patch. I just used the default settings. Also for this one, the violins too, which is actually the same patch. When we have a closer look at presidents, violins one and two are on the left side of the stage. The double bass is in the center. The violas and the cellos are positioned on the right side. Based on the argument Paul gave, I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to do a little bit of changing things in this setup of the strings. I'm going to remove presidents of all the strings and just use them how they come out straight out of the box. Because Paul doesn't do anything with his strings. So I want to try that too, if that works for me, for this MIDI mockup. If that doesn't work, I'm pleased with what I have, but I just want to try and experiment with that. So let's have a listen to the string section isolated. When we have a look at the choir, both two libraries from ADO, one, Liberus, a beautiful children's choir, just default patches, nothing really done to it. The other library is Lacrimoso, the female legato in combination with the man's legato. And both default settings didn't do anything with the microphone settings. When we have a closer look at the settings of precedence, the only thing that I really done is I pushed them both pretty far off the stage at a distance of 100. The female with an angle of minus 20 and the men on the other side with an angle of 20 and the children in the middle. That's all what I have done with the choir. So let's have a listen to this section isolated. The only one that's left is the piano and in this case I have used the gentleman from Native Instruments. A lovely piano. Really didn't do anything with the setting, just used it straight out of the box and I only positioned it with precedence and I pushed it to the left side of the stage with an angle of minus 30 and a distance of 60. So that's nothing really spectacular about the piano, but 
it needed to be in this MIDI markup. The CineSign light is done nothing. No EQ cleaning, no precedence, no microphone settings. Just a simple free library, by the way, which is awesome to use. How does that sound? Well, let's have a quick listen. And that low sound, that low sub bass gives some extra to the double basses and the tuba, which is a simple trick to beef up your low end in your MIDI backups. I really enjoyed this experiment, asking you all for your opinion and your votes on the three basic orchestral mockups. And I am really thankful for all your votes and the comments that have been shared on last week's video. Those tiny treasures I talked about earlier in this video, because I have learned a lot from it. And I guess that many others, starting aspiring film composers, but also composers who are on the road for quite some time, can learn from it. Next week, I will return to this project. And I'm going to start with setting up a basic mixing template. So we're going to add buses and do some routings. So hopefully, I will see you next Thursday with another video.